In my review of Olympus's new EM5 Mark II camera, I liked almost everything, but I found the compact size made the controls cramped for even my quite small hands. It tended to spoil my enjoyment of using an otherwise highly capable camera, and I likened it to a smartphone where you found yourself touching controls without meaning to and sending your carefully chosen settings flying off all over the place. My intention in buying the grip was solely to make the camera better to use by preventing that. For that reason, I didn't buy the battery holder, which will fit under this grip and which adds even more buttons and dials to the lineup, but also obviously increases the physical size even more. Useful as the extra battery power would be, in my case that means the M5 Mark II won't fit my camera bag with my EM1 in it, and I do like to have a second camera body to hand. That's personal, of course, and if the extra bolt doesn't concern you, I'd recommend buying the battery holder as well. But back to the grip. It's quite small and feels nicely of a piece with the camera. It's fairly easy to fit, but because it blocks the battery compartment, it does make changing the battery quite fiddly and much slower. There are no controls other than the shutter button and dial, and it has a tripod screw underneath, of course. Does it improve the camera handling? Yes, it does, very much. It solves the worst problem I found on the bare body, which was constantly jogging the front dial and dialing in unwanted exposure correction. I found myself having to remember to zero the correction before shooting, which is unacceptable, and I ended up disabling what is, for me, after aperture and ISO, my most frequently accessed setting. With the grip, the finger's angle of attack on the shutter button is moved rearwards and no longer contacts the forward edge of the dial, which was the source of my problem. At the same time, because the shutter button is further forward, it moves the palm of my hand more to the side of the camera, which takes the pressure off the arrow pad and means that I can reinstate its default function of immediate shifting of the focus point. I also found my finger unwittingly pressing the preview button on the front of the camera. The extra distance from the grip to body cures that. So the good news is that the grip has solved the M5 Mark II's handling problems for me and is now much nicer to use. It's not all good news though. If you add the price of the grip to the camera body, the camera starts to look quite expensive. It also makes it bigger than Olympus's flagship EM1. That makes me realise that the EM1 is probably the minimum size for a camera body with professional potential and enjoyable handling. It's still no GH4, which is a bit bigger still and curvier in the modern manner. Lastly, I'm a minimalist at heart. The original shutter and front dial remain active, duplicating the action of the grip. It just seems untidy somehow. And it certainly looks pretty ugly to my eyes, the top appearing crowded by the two now redundant controls. The grip on its own doesn't add much weight, and while I found the little EM5 Mark II handled perfectly well with big lenses like the F28 Telezoom, it unquestionably feels more natural with the grip in place. All in all, if I put aside my design Nazi pretensions, the grip does what it is intended to. That is, it makes an excellent and capable camera a nice handling one as well. Finally, I can't help wondering why Olympus didn't just make the M5 Mark II a little bigger in the first place. It's just a thought, and thanks for watching.